What's up, guys? My name's Doofus McDoofus, and this is the Legion TD2 Mastermind tier list. But with a twist, these won't be rated by me. These are based on win probability in the last four patches. That's right. Of course, I'll give my opinion on whether I think it's in a good place or bad place, but these are going to be based on win rate probability. Let's jump right into it. The worst mastermind in the last four patches based on win rate probability is Cartel. Cartel is the worst mastermind in the last four patches. Surprise? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I guess that just that losing so much income uh, after wave 10 doesn't matter how far ahead you get. But yeah, I'm not that surprised by Cartel. By the way, let me just let you guys know that some of these masterminds have a very, very small sample size because either they're new, like Miner or Scrapper, or in some circumstances, people just don't play it, right? So if there's a, a small player base, it could be super low win probability, um, or super high win probability, just based on only a, a small few that play the game. But still, take these win rates with a grain of salt, or just take a huge bite of them and play your game based on what not to play and what to play. Next up, we have Kingsguard. This one, I, I would, I would, I would have put it even worse. Um, I would have put Kingsguard even lower on a tier list. Um, the win rate is just so bad. I enjoy playing Kingsguard, but that doesn't change the fact that it is dog water and ranked. Right? It is very, very low win probability. Um, and I guess I guess it's just because like once you take king damage, like you're still giving up so much gold. Like maybe you don't die. But if you leak a massive amount of creeps and you survive because of King's Guard, it doesn't change the fact that you lost 500 gold because you and your teammate both leaked 100%. Yeah, you're still alive because your king was 10% stronger. Uh, but you're still cooked. You know? But yeah, I think King's Guard, definitely one of the worst masterminds to play in the current meta. Next up, we have... Cash out, and this is one that surprised me heavily. This one actually, I was not expecting cash out to be this low. Um, I was pretty surprised when I was, when I was doing my calculations. Uh, I put it in my spreadsheet, and bam, I was like, whoa, cash out that low? Starting with an extra 20 to 22 gold? That's bad. Yeah, I, I, I guess... I guess cash out isn't, isn't what it used to be. I used to, when I'd make like my real analytical doofs i would only play cash out because i felt like it was the most consistent mastermind no more no more will we do that you know cash out is out also out castle another one that i don't enjoy playing castle um because i feel like it's cheating because i feel like it's too strong um but the win rate is, is bad, you know, it's, it's not great, you know. Um, that could be just because more people are playing better masterminds, or maybe Castle is just not as good anymore. Maybe the maybe the early game is too important, um, but then that would sort of contradict why is, Cartel, why is Cartel the worst mastermind, you know. If the early game is uh, so important, why would Cartel be last and Castle be just as bad? I guess, uh, oh. Crack my voice. I guess they're just both underperforming. Uh, but yeah, Castle, pretty uh, pretty far below 50% win rate. Uh, need more income. <laughs> you know, although I, I guess we can't buff all of these, can we? Next up, Fiesta. Honestly, I would think Fiesta has like the worst win rate ever. I, I would have put it next to, uh, next to Kingsguard. Um... You just lose so much gold now, right? When I used to play Fiesta, um, 
you could and I know it's 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 kind of unfair, you know how it was. You could leak 100% like the first four waves. Wave 1, wave 2, wave 3, wave 4. Leak 100% and you could still win the game. Um now it has changed to where if you leak on wave 1, right? Let's take wave 1. You need to have like a 33% or a, it might it might 42% I believe is break even. You need to have a 33% leak to be in profit, right? So that you're not losing gold from Fiesta. And then it's like, and then it's like 42% the next wave. And then it's like 40, 40, 42 to 50% the next wave. Like it's almost wanting you to leak later, but the later you leak, the more damaging it is to the outcome. Where it used to be, you want to leak waves one, two, and three. Now, unless you leak perfect on those waves one, two, and three, Fiesta is just not as beneficial. Uh, which breaks my heart because it's my favorite mastermind. But I've known that it was weak for a while. Might have even thought it was even weaker. But there's Fiesta there. Chaos. Chaos at 40. And this one has a lot of a lot of players, right? Um, a lot of people like Chaos. Um, I think once we start getting into the 48s, 49s, 50s, you're in a decent spot, right? Like Chaos being at 48%. Uh, there's a bit of flexibility, um, still a touch weak, but you could probably play it, right? You could probably get away with playing Chaos. Um, I mean, it's really just roll, roll dependent, right? It's, it's luck dependent at that point. Um, that's what Chaos is, you know, you get a brand new roll, and if you get saved on for 16 and you don't roll Flowers or Pyros, you're cooked, you know? But then they send you on 17 and you re-roll you reroll Mudmen, and you're able to place 20 hardened Mudmen's on 17 and easily win the game. You know, so it's it's a uh, it's a roll, it's a roll diff, and uh, high RNG, but I think it's okay. Greed, another one. I I would have put like greed and cash out. I would have thought the safer ones, you know, would be a little higher, uh, but they're a little lower. Um, greed. Literally the most basic of basic with the five income, nothing special. Um, it was the original mastermind years ago when the game first came out. Um, it is the safest of safe, um, and the win rate is is enough. You know, it's not substantial, it's not good, but when you're that close, that close to the midpoint, I don't think it's that bad. So I I would still play greed. Maybe just in like a tournament setting, not for fun, but in a tournament setting, I could definitely see playing greed. Scrapper. And now, once again, I want to highlight what I had said earlier. Some of these mastermind win rates are based off of a massively smaller sample size. That's, isn't that a, a weird thing to say? Massively small. Uh, that's beyond the point. Scrapper, 51% win rate. Only been around for two patches. Um, and honestly, I think it has, it only had like 10, 10 to 12,000 games played where some of these, um, had like 60,000 games played in one patch, not two patches, right? Four patches for the rest of the calculation, but scrapper 51, not bad. So the people that are playing it, um, it's working, right? The people that are playing it, it, it is working. Um, and I will say it got even better, right? It got even better. So the win rate that was already quite high as we barely break into this next patch, uh, already being high. And then it goes from, uh, if you're wondering, Scrapper, you sell, uh, you can sell any unit for what was 80% of its value. Now it's 85. So Scrapper might be a lot better now, you know? But once again, small sample size. Um, so we will see how that actually works out. And then I I realize there's no way I can hide these. Okay, I can hide it like that. Next up, Miner. Back to back, right? Back to back, the two with the lowest uh, lowest played sample size. Right about 51% 51, 51, uh, pretty good win rates. Um, but remember that small sample size. Um, I think Miner is much better than Scrapper. Um, I think Miner is going to be really good. Uh, cheaper workers, but less gold at the start. 
I think will be very, very effective once people start to realize exactly how I haven't even realized how to play it perfectly. I'm going to guess that it, you play it like castle, you play super safe the first couple of waves, and then you giga push. Um, but if you get starved, you know, and you don't push workers, right? You almost have to push workers to no send with with minor. Um, and that takes takes some some nuts. You know, it takes takes a little courage. But minor 51.4%. Champion. I know Jules is just like clapping his hands right now. One of the creators of the game, developers, Jules loves his champion. I I guess whoever's playing champion is killing them. Um, I never would, and and this one had a, a larger sample size than I would have expected. It, it was not ten or twelve thousand. It was it was up there. It was it was a middle mark uh, sample size, and a uh, decent amount of people are playing champion and winning with it. Um, you know, you can place a, pretty much you place a giga buff on one unit, um, and that's all. You, know, you get that giga buff, and um, hopefully that unit can carry you. Though, if it's a really good unit push more workers at the start or be super unleakable once it has tree of life or like APS and other buffs. Um, I usually make fun of champion, but maybe, maybe I stop playing Fiesta and cartel and I start playing champion, you know, like I might actually win. So something that, something to think about with champion redraw, not surprised. Um, redraw is always in my S tier. Um, it's completely broken, you know, it's like chaos, but on steroids, right? Redraw, you're able to purchase a new roll of units. Um, so whereas chaos is just every wave, different set of units, different set of units. Um, redraw, you can buy as many different set of units, um, different set of uh, unit combinations as you want. Um, it's it's silly. I, I, I really don't like I, I don't prefer the RNG, the chaos is, the redraws, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. Um, if you want to win, maybe play some redraw. And and you can learn, you can learn all the units, you can figure out crazy combos. It's pretty nasty. Stash. Not surprised. Um, stash, pretty darn strong. Um, like, how, and another kind of RNG... How is your opposing, uh, how's your your opponent, right? How's your opponent supposed to know when you're 200 power score behind, you're in fourth place, you're losing the game, and you go for a long save, and then you send them and they're 600 over value because they stash perfectly. How can you predict that? Like, you can't predict when somebody's going to stash. You can try to force them to stash, um, and then, but then it's like chess, right? It's like, Oh, have they stashed yet? Mm. No, they haven't stashed yet. Okay, so I need to income king here. Oh no, I income kinged and they and they save stash. Now we're screwed. You know, like the piggy bank thing is. I'm not a huge fan of it. You know, um, but when I've played it, I'm, pr- I'm pretty decent. You know, um, and I guess I guess you could say like from stash side they also. Are flipping a coin they have to know when to stash when not to um, so you do have to have some cojones but I just I'm not surprised it's this high 52.4 percent on stash not surprised next mega mind it's it is the most played um, it's it's the most played mastermind um, in the last four patches uh, probably I don't want to look at the numbers um, ruin my video but i'm pretty sure it was over 50 percent um over 50 percent of the the entire games played of these 60 masterminds 16 masterminds uh was megamind um so it's just it's pretty strong that one gold uh really makes a difference in addition like i'll always say you know maybe it's just because i'm a streamer and i get nervous but your opponent not knowing what mastermind you are, right? If you just perma play Fiesta, just snail. Expect them to be Fiesta. Uh, if they permanently play Castle, oh, okay, I know it's going to be Castle. We need to get ahead uh, before the Castle hits. They play Megamind only? There's no read. 
there's there, there's no read to be had on on Mega Mind only, right? There's too many different masterminds. There's 16 things that this this opponent could be. So Mega Mind is is super strong. Not surprised um, with that high of a win rate. Yolo. Sort of surprised, and and there's there's a there's something to talk about here. So Yolo, um, has always had a really high win rate, and then they made the huge change, right? Yolo, where you would get uh six random units, and then you could uh with what seven income, and you could burn one income to reroll once. They changed it recently in what the last two patches, and now your six units you're stuck with, just stuck with those six units. The entire game, there's no reroll, there's no penalty, uh, but you're screwed, right? Surprisingly, the win rate is is the same. Surprisingly, people are still kicking butt with YOLO, even without the reroll ability for minus one income. You got me. I, I didn't see it coming. I guess starting with that high of income with no cartel like penalty um just pays out, you know? So the early game is important. And I guess the likelihood of a decent roll versus likelihood of a really bad roll is greater for the good roll. Um, I mean, 53.8. Now we're starting to get into like some serious business. Like, like these top. Honestly, this whole right side is what you should be playing statistically, right? If you're just trying to abuse uh, abuse the stats, but that's 53.8. Pretty nasty. Lock in right there. Right there on lock in, another just super strong one. You have the ability to pick the unit you want to play. They'll give you a free roll, or you go with random lock in for that extra extra seven gold. Um, and now you're just cooking, right? You get free gold. You get like sort of the cash out bonus of some free gold, and then you get almost like a YOLO style roll where they give you six units. But the units are actually like tier one. They're actually correct tiers. And unlike YOLO, you get to actually reroll once if uh, the units are really bad. So yeah, lock in, super strong. Um, it's nasty. You know? Nasty, but in a good way, you know? Because it, it, it also is like helpful to newer players. Um, whereas with the random lock in, it can be helpful to super high level players, right? Just because of that the good income plus the extra gold. And the rolls are usually... Fairly decent, you know, fairly decent rolls. So 53.9 in the last four patches, pretty impressive. Um, and this is this is surprising. And let me just say, let me just say, I don't think many people would think this with Saboteur, but I'm, I'm going based off of win rate of the last four patches. And this was correct. This was... This was Saboteur. I, I know it has it had a small sample size. Okay, it did. It had a small sample size. But if we're looking purely at numbers, Saboteur had the highest win rate. I'm just as surprised as you. Um. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Whoever is spamming Saboteur is is kicking butt, and um, I'm I'm gonna have to try it myself. I'm gonna have to try it myself. But these are your 16 mastermind win rates. Um, use this as you will. This is for the last four patches. What are you surprised about? Um, me personally, I would say cash out and greed. I'm actually kind of surprised um, that the win rate is so low. Um, you know, or like greed is maybe not that bad, but I thought it'd be a lot better. Um, and of course, Saboteur, you, you got to have to be honest, like, I was I was shook. I honestly I even looked back to the further patches and it still was dang pretty consistent there. Small player base, small sample size for that mastermind, uh, but it was it was consistently consistently that high. So, saboteur, well done. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please like, please comment. Um, did you like this style of the probability versus my opinion? Um, please let me know. And thank you guys for watching.